All right, everyone, welcome. We'll get started in uh, just a few minutes here. All right, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes uh, for people to file in. Uh, hope you guys can uh, hear me all right. I got my chat window open, so we'll have that uh, going also in case you guys have any questions during the presentation. So, uh, like I said, well, it's probably five. It's 5.01. We'll just wait another minute or so, and then we'll get started, okay? Oh, excellent. You can hear me. Perfect. Good. All these, always have to test these things, you know? All right. 502. I guess it's time to time to get this thing going. Thanks for everyone for coming. This is um, we are Jungle Software, and we are doing a brand new seminar or webinar uh, this time around called Screenplays and Scheduling. And I'm actually excited about doing this because I have never done this uh, as a webinar. I used to do it in, in classes a lot. Would go to universities and and such in conferences and do this in in uh, uh, live, but I've never done it as a webinar. So I had to get all my old notes together and I added some new stuff to it. So I hope you enjoy it. Hope it goes smoothly. Um, during the webinar, please feel free. Uh, if you can't keep your microphone muted, if you don't mind, um, but feel free to chat a question if you have one into the chat. It's right in front of me here on the right. I'll be checking it out every couple of minutes. And uh, especially if it is pertaining to what I'm speaking about, um, it's the perfect time to ask the question. If it's not pertaining to what I'm speaking about, please hold on to the question at the end. We'll have a, a Q and A. We'll have plenty of time for a Q and A. So it have. So if you have a question about something about screenplays, formatting, or or whatever uh, in production or scheduling, or gorilla for that matter, or final draft um, that I'm not talking about, you know, hold on to it and 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 we'll do it at the end. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so this is our screenplays and scheduling webinar. And I'm going to go over real quick here what we're going to go over. Let's see, here we go. So first thing we're going to go over is uh, the first half of it is going to be basically screenplays. And the second half of it is going to be scheduling. So uh, we're going to go over uh, how to format your screenplay properly. This is really a big issue. You might not think it is. Um, but many people really don't know how to format their screenplay proper, properly, especially for scheduling. And they're, they're, we're going to talk a little bit about formatting a screenplay for, uh, for a reader or for uh, someone reading it, like a production company or, or producer and such, and then formatting a screenplay for scheduling, which is a little bit different. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to go over some of the uh, import errors that you get. Well, first, we're going to import the screenplay into scheduling is the next thing we're going to do. We're going to get it in there. And then we're going to look at some of the errors that are very, very common when you import a screenplay because there are uh, consistent errors. The same thing comes up over and over and over again. And we've uh, put in a whole bunch of things in Gorilla to sort of help you fix those errors if you don't want to go back to the screenplay and fix them there. Okay, you can actually fix a lot of these in in Gorilla once you've imported the screenplay. Um, we're going to talk a little bit, just a little bit, uh, about writing a different language because we do get that a lot. Um, we 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 are international in terms of our um, uh, uh, widespread uh, um, uh, program, and so we'll talk a little bit about writing a different language. And so, if you have any questions about that, I'll be happy to answer you uh, answer questions about that. Then we're going to go into tagging the screenplay. And we're going to talk a little bit about tagging the screenplay in a final draft in, in the screenplay pro program and tagging the screenplay in Gorilla, both. So we're going to go over a little bit of both because they're both important. And then we're going to go over syncing. So what if you make a mistake or what if um, changes have been made to the screenplay? You've already started production. You've already done a lot of work. Uh, in Gorilla or in your in in the schedule, and you and the writer comes back to you, or the producer comes back to you. It's okay, we got a we had another scene, or we modified uh, two or three scenes here. Okay, um, next thing we're going to go now. We're going to be on the uh, well, we're already on the Gorilla side, but we're going to uh, be a little bit more on the scheduling side now. So we're going to break down the script, like I said. We're going to talk a little bit about creating shoot days, 
and then crew and actors. And that's really important when you, when you schedule. And then scheduling scenes on the strip board. And then we're going to go for call sheets and reports, okay? And we'll have Q&A at the end. And a nice surprise is we are going to have a raffle. Um, Final Draft has graciously agreed to uh, raffle off three copies of Final Draft. Uh, so didn't expect that. That's really nice of them. So we're going to get that in the end. If you don't have Final Draft, um, maybe you'll get it today. Okay, because that is the that is the uh, uh, program of choice that we we recommend. We do uh, work with other screenwriting programs, and we're going to talk about that too. But we do prefer Final Draft and uh, uh, when you're working with with Gorilla. Okay, all right. So let's talk about well, let's, that's the next thing. So let's talk about the screenwriting programs that uh, at least Gorilla uh, recommends, okay? And of course, Final Draft is the premier one, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, it imports into what's called the FDX file. It, it is an XML file, if anyone knows, uh, wants to know what that means. And also the SEX, and SEX doesn't stand for what you think it does. It stands for scheduling or screenplay export, okay? Screenplay export or scheduling export. And uh, those are the two file formats that uh, Final Draft can export out of, and we accept both of them in Gorilla, okay? Uh, the next one is Movie Magic Screenwriter. Now that uh, does just the SCX file, but we do uh, accept that. And then the other two that we have now added in Gorilla 7 are Fade In and Writer Duet, which also use the FDX file as a save format. It's not their native format, uh, it, it, that they save in, but they can export to the FDX file, which is the XML file that um, is now become sort of the standard screenwriting file format. And lastly, we added Celtics. Now, Celtics doesn't really have a save file format, but you can export into what's called the fountain format, which is really, we're not going to go over that uh, really in this uh, webinar. And I really should do one on that because um, if you don't, have any money, if you don't want to use Final Draft, or if you don't want to use any screenwriting program, you just want to use Word, because trust me, a lot of people call me up and they're like, okay, I want to write my program in Word. How do I get in Gorilla? Well, it's a little difficult, but if you do use the fountain format in your Word processor, you can do that. Um, again, I'm not going to go over that in this webinar. You can look up the fountain format and check it out for yourself. It is actually um, kind of cool, okay? But we do accept that. Uh, uh, if you want to import into Gorilla from the fountain format. All right. Um, okay, so now let's go over, we're going to go, I'm going to open up Final Draft now in just a second. And we're going to talk about some of the, uh, now these are, this is very basic. And most of you, I would imagine, probably if you've written a screenplay, if you've read a screenplay, you probably uh, uh, know what these are right here on the screen. I'm going to go over them just a little bit because believe it or not, you're going to learn something. Uh, uh, I guarantee it. So uh, these are the different sections of a screenplay, obviously. The scene heading, action, character, parenthetical, dialogue, and transition, okay? Um, now, the first one is the scene heading. This one, of course, to be honest with you, when it comes to scheduling, is really the most important because if you don't, if you don't format the heading properly, it will not come into the scheduling program the way you want it to come into. And we're going to talk about that. Action and character are fairly straightforward, but we're going to go over character a little bit when you have multiple characters, character names that are the same character, but a slightly different name, which happens all the time. When you're writing a 120-page screenplay, inevitably, unless you really go through it with a fine-tooth comb, you're going to have um, characters like Bob, and then maybe someone, the writer might have written Robert, or something like that, or Bobby, you know, for example. And it really is the same character, but the writer put in a different name. And the screenplay uh, is going to no recognize that as a different name, is so, and so is Gorilla when you import it into Gorilla. So we're going to show you how to fix that. Parenthetical, obviously, is underneath the uh, character name. And uh, it is just a direction, right? We're going to go over that in a minute. Uh, on how to to uh, to have the actor you know say the line, okay? And then of course you have dialogue and then transition. All right, so let's see. Formatting. Okay, this is really important, like I said. Um, 
formatting the scene heading is, is incredibly important. And uh, if you've read, if you are if you were a script reader like I have been for many, many years, um, reading scripts for many of the production houses, um, you, you've seen everything under the sun on how people or how writers format their, their slug line. The correct way, it's the simplest way to do it. You do the interior or the exterior, the set, which is, for example, in this example, it's his house, and then the day-night field. That's it. You really don't want to do anything more than that. Now, I'm going to go into um, final draft right now, real quick. And this is a sample screenplay that we're going to use when we're going to import this into Gorilla. And as you can see, for example, in scene one, you've got your interior, exterior, e e INT or EXT period. Okay. Don't put anything else there. And then the set, which in this instance, the first one is just a city, Beverly Hills, California. The second one is a little simpler. It says Hollywood. Then this one is apartment. And then followed by a dash and then the day night field, okay? So I'm gonna go over a few uh, incorrect ways that writers format their screenplay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go first, proper formatting, okay? So obviously uh, these are some on the, on that you see on the screen are the right way to format your screenplay, okay? So you've got the interior and the exterior, one or the, one or the other, okay? Then your set field, and it can be more than one word, of course, right? And then a dash, one dash, not two, not three, one. And then the day-night field. Now, when I say the day-night field, it does. It's called the day-night field in 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 the in the industry. It doesn't have to be just day or night, but it must be a time of day. Okay. Notice here on the on the on the right, it'll ask. It'll say time of day. So for example, in these examples here, you have day, night, morning, sunset, dusk, and I'm gonna show you exactly how many and what Gorilla accepts in terms of the, of the time of day, okay? Now, this is uh, some improper ways to format your script, okay? Now, even though when you read the script, it makes a lot of sense, especially when you look at the, uh, the third one here, interior office continued. We're like, okay, well, as a writer, I'm sorry, as a reader, if the previous scene was probably interior office day, and this scene, the next scene after that says interior office continued, you would assume as the writer of the, I'm sorry, there's a reader of the screenplay that continued means, well, it's continued of the day, right? So it's still day. Even So as much as that makes sense to the to the writer and to the reader, that is incorrect formatting. And what's going to happen when you do that is it's going to import into Gorilla and anything that is not recognized at the end of the uh, slug line, which is the day-night field, if it's not one, and I'm going to show you which are the ones that we, we accept, it's going to just put it to day. So that's something that to, to, to keep in mind when you're writing the screenplay to format the time of day as a time of day. That's why it's called a time of day. Here's another one, example that is incorrect later. Uh, well, again, as a writer, you're reading, you're in the flow. You're just like you're reading a novel, like you're reading a chapter and exterior beach later. Okay, maybe a few minutes later, maybe 10 minutes later. And you can notice the one on the bottom here says moments later. It makes a lot of sense as a writer, right? We are recording this. Absolutely, we are recording this and we'll be able to access this on our website, okay? Um, but moments later doesn't mean anything when you're looking at this scene independent of the rest of the scenes. Because remember, when you are scheduling a script, when you're scheduling in the schedule, you could just be looking at scene 10, okay? Because scene nine, which is the one previous to that, which you know was moments before, is being shot two weeks later or two days later or two days before. So when it says moments later, as the UPM, as the production manager, the production manager is like, oh, okay, I got to, you know, get the screenplay, right? And find out what the previous scene was to find out if it was day or night, because he has no idea. Now, of course, the context of the screenplay might dictate whether it's day or night, but, you know, th th this is the UPM wants to, wants to concentrate on the schedule not on the, the content of the script, okay? So this is incorrect formatting. 
I don't care if you're writing a multi-million dollar script. I don't care if you were the biggest writer in Hollywood and you've sold your screenplay for $2 million and that's how they do it. Well, I'm gonna tell you as, as a UPM, as a producer, it's not correct. You're doing making more work for the UPM, okay? Also go to the top one here. Notice exterior dash dash house dash dash day. I've seen these. This is what, if I put all the ones that I saw here, we would be, this would be the, the entire webinar because it's just crazy how many, how many different ways you can format a slug line. Okay. And, and same with the, the second one, exterior period. That's correct. House is correct. But notice that someone put, well, this example period after house, that is not correct. Okay. It needs to be a dash. Now, the reason why this is such a problem in Final Draft and in any other screenplay program is because when the writer can literally write whatever he wants or she wants, there is no, there is no uh, reining in the screenplay program does not force you and it does not correct you like a spell check to say, sorry, you know, you shouldn't do this. But when you bring it into the screenplay, pro uh, the scheduling program, you're going to have some issues. So make sure, again, I'm going to go see if I can go, can I go back? There we go. Proper formatting. Very, very important. Otherwise, it's going to be a complete mess in your in your screenplay. OK, in, in, in the schedule. All right. Let's go on to parentheticals again. You're like, OK, what, what why do we even have to talk about parentheticals? I'll tell you why, because a lot of writers and again, I'm speaking to to beginning writers. OK, if you're if you're if more advanced or writer, uh, you might not have this problem. They will, and I've seen this, remember, I've been doing this for 25 years. I've seen this. I've read so many screenplays. I've seen this. In where it says parenthetical, I have loudly. Now, Stanley Kowalski, Stella, you know, loudly, Stella, Stella. Okay, that, all right, you know, that, that makes sense. But I've seen in this parenthetical, a novel, literally, you know, parentheticals that go on for four or five lines. Like Stanley, you know, uh, bends down. I think I have. Do I have? Do I have an example? I I do. Okay, perfect. I did this a couple of days ago. So this is it. I put it in red. Okay, kneels and puts his hands on. If you know the movie, on his face and screams at the top of his lungs. Tears flowing from his angered face. Beautiful writing. I mean, I'm not saying it's beautiful writing. Put it in the in the action. Don't put it in the parenthetical. Okay, put it in the action above it or below it or what have you, but in the parenthetical, if you want to do a parenthetical, I'm not a big fan of them, to be honest with you, because that's the whole point of the director. The director might want to do it softly. The director might want to do it loudly. That's up to the director. It's not up to the writer, but that's for another, another, uh, another mm -hmm. webinar. Okay. So be very minimalistic, in my opinion, with your parentheticals. This is just advice. Okay. It has nothing to do with importing into Gorilla or this and that. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Scene numbering. Okay, this is another very big one. Uh, use simple number format to number your scenes. Again, I have seen screenplays given to me with a numbering format that makes absolutely no sense. They'll start with 100 and then they'll go to 200 and then they'll start put decimals 300.1 300.23 and I, I i asked them what why did you do such a complicated numbering scheme well you know the 100s we're going to shoot in this location and the 200 oh my god don't do that okay simple numbering one two three four now i'm going to go into final draft real quick and show you that on the left and on the right, this is a, a screenplay that is numbered, okay? You can do that by going to the production pull-down menu, select scene numbers. Now this is already numbered. So if I click okay, it's not really gonna do anything, but you can number your scenes right here or renumber them. It'll start from one. Now there is, and it says keep existing numbers, okay? I'm gonna talk about that in a second too. Now you do have in final draft, a numbering scheme option here, which allows you to do 1A, uh, one, you know, uh, 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 1A, 1, 1A, 2, 3. That's okay, too. You can do that. But when you're starting a fresh screenplay, there's no reason to have 1A, 1B, 1C. 1A, 1B, 1C 
it could be for modified scenes or it could be for added scenes, like you added a scene after you finished scene one between scene one and two, and it's going to be scene one A. So that's really where you should be using, you know, the A's and the B's, right? But for the most part, you really want to keep your numbering scheme simple, okay? And this is important. Why? Because if and when you ever have to sync the screenplay back into Gorilla, because you want to, uh, mo you have modified the screenplay, those scene numbers have to be very, very clear and very succinct, and they cannot change. Okay, I'm going to get over that when we get to the sync part. All right. Okay. Um, scene numbering, right? Anything about else about scene numbering? I think we're good on that. Okay. I'm going fast, I know, but I had a lot to cover. But if you do have questions about anything, just please feel free to chat them in. Locking the scripts. Okay. So this is the definition of locking the script. And I put a lot of color here because it's very important. Once I'm going to read right off of here. Once the script is published, now published doesn't mean sold necessarily, but it does mean going into production. Okay. And handed out to the department heads, right? And talent in preparation for production, the pages must be locked so that any changes made after this time are easily tracked. Now, if you've been on production on any production, okay, television or film, you will get revised pages. Sometimes they'll just give you these colored pages, they could, this different color scheme, maybe green, purple, yellow, uh, depending on the revision, the different colors will, will, will mean a different revision. So if any changes are made to the script after the circulation, these revived, revised pages will be printed and distributed. And so why that's important is because the scene numbers, like I said, don't change. So if you make changes to the screenplay after it starts going into production or even being, being prepared for production, okay? I don't mean like shooting, but I mean like already someone's doing the schedule, okay? You can't change the scene number. It's like, it's like oh, sorry, you gotta do all your work over again. Can't do that. You got to keep the, the scene numbers to say, oh, but the writer wants the scene five now to be in scene six. No, change it, add, add, lock the script, make a new scene, call it 5A or what have you. That's the proper way to do it. Okay. Locking the script is very important. Many, many times I get uh, uh, people that will call and they will say, um, we revise the script. And I said, great, you know, you could, you could, you could sink it in. That's not a problem. And they said, well, we did. It didn't work. And I said, well, can I, can I look at the script? And I look at it and I'm like, well, why these scenes were renumbered? Won't work. You got to keep the same numbers when you sync a script. Okay. All right. I, we're ready to go into importing the screenplay, I think, right? Yes. Okay. Great. So we're going to get out of PowerPoint for a second. And now we're going to go into the screenplay. Now I'm going to go back and forth from Final Draft and Gorilla. So, but we're going to actually import this into Gorilla right now. Okay, just to see what it looks like. And then we're going to talk about what, what happens here. So I don't know why that zoom is up. All right, so let's launch Gorilla here. And let me go into the manager. All right, now uh, this is what Gorilla looks like when you first launch it. Uh, you do have schedules on the left and you have budgets on the right. These are just samples. We're actually going to be looking at the Norman one in a minute when I get to a certain uh, part of the uh, webinar, but just ignore them for now because we're importing a brand new script, the one right here. Okay. Uh, now I called it Hotel Cucaracha with errors. I literally put in some errors in here because when we import it, I'm going to point out some of those errors, errors and how to fix them. Okay. So, it is called with errors. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So in order to import a screenplay in Gorilla, you just go down to the plus sign on the bottom and you have these options here on how do you wanna create a new schedule. Uh, you can import a screenplay, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use that first option. You can load a schedule file. So if somebody sends you a schedule, you can load a schedule that's already uh, has a script in it or create a brand new schedule from scratch. Okay, most people don't use this option because most people will import a screenplay, but it is very possible if you're doing a documentary, for example, or if you're doing uh, something that you really 
uh, don't want to write a whole script about and, and uh, you just have maybe five scenes or 10 scenes, it's a student film, for example, you can create the schedule from scratch without importing the screenplay, but we're not going to go over that. Okay, so we're going to click on the import screenplay button. And remember in the beginning, I told you that there are three file formats that Gorilla accepts. Okay, the FDX file format, the uh, SEX file format, and the uh, fountain format. Now we're going to be using the FDX because that's final draft. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that button here. Uh, just some text. We're going to go over that in a little bit. Don't worry about that right now. We're going to click OK. And OK, I'm going to type in, uh, just, I'll just type in screenplay with errors because we, I told you we have some errors here. And click on the import button. And let's see here, this is it right there. And select it. And we're gonna import that in. And uh, we're gonna compare what we import into Gorilla with the screenplay to, uh, to see what exactly came in and how it came in. And then we're gonna go over some of these errors that are very typical when you import a screenplay uh, from uh, any screenplay program for that matter. All right, so now we've imported the screenplay and I'm going to sort of do a side-by-side -side comparison at least for a, for a few scenes, okay? So let me go ahead and open up the screenplay here and let's try, let's just do this first. Let's just, and this is something that you should do and when you first import, remember Final Draft and in any other screenplay program for that matter, Fade In, Writer Duet, Movie Matter Screener, they're a different company. Gorilla does scheduling and budgeting. We don't do a screenplay program. So when, and when you, anytime you're, 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 you know, taking some data from one program and putting it into another, that's not the same program, you want to check your data. Okay. Very, very important to check your data. So, cause they can make changes on their end. Final draft can change things with their FDX file uh, that, and, and, you know, that, I mean, we normally are told what the changes are, but it's very possible that things are changed in the, in the code and of course, it'll mess up the import. So that's very important to check. So let's go over at least this first few scenes. We can see that the first scene here, exterior Beverly Hills, California day, and scene one up here on the right, you could see this is the uh, navigator here on the right, no problem. Uh, exterior Hollywood day, exterior Hollywood day, perfect. Apartment 6C, apartment 6C, Look, looking good so far. I'm not gonna go too far into it. Basement apartment, basement apartment. I don't have to go through all of it, but what you really should do is go to the end just to make sure that they all came in. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the end. And this is scene, what scene number is this? 17. Okay. So we have 17 scenes that we imported. And if we go, here we go. Here we go. 17 scenes, Amanda's bedroom night. Perfect. So notice that they all came in uh, from the screenplay. Okay. Now I'm, I'm going to move this over just to the left a little bit just so you could see these colors here on the on the right and you might be wondering what those colors represent because they're they're not random they do mean something but notice that each scene has a color either yellow white brown there's one brown there i wonder what that means blue and green okay so the color is basically uh dictated by the interior and the exterior field and the day night field. Remember, we're going to go, I'm always going to be going back to this day night field because it's so darn important. So let me go back to scene one. Okay. So scene one is a, in, an exterior day scene. Okay. And you could see that that is yellow. Exterior day, yellow. Interior day for scene three, white. Aha. So we have some, some, some difference. Scene 11 is brown. So I kind of want to know what scene 11 is. I know what scene 11 is. I'm just doing this for effect. Okay, let's go down to scene 11. And scene 11 is evening. Okay, interior evening is brown. Okay, so these are standard industry colors uh, that represent the day night field and the interior exterior field. Why is that done? Because I'm going to show you on the strip board when we get there, when you see a scene very quickly, you can see whether it's day night by the color. So you don't have to read right? Uh, and then you could sort them together, right? Depending on the location or the set of the scene. 
All right. So now that we have that, let's, uh, the scene seem to have come in okay. So let's go to the next part, which is, and let me see what my PowerPoint presentation says. Ah, okay, we're gonna check for errors on uh, character names. Perfect, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna move this uh, out of the way right over there on the bottom. So let's look here uh, a little bit about the layout on how Gorilla is laid out, okay? So we've got the scenes on the right, and this is very similar to just like a scene navigator in, in Final Draft, which you can you can get to if you click the scenes button, you'll see all the scenes. And to navigate, you just click on a scene and you very quickly go to that particular scene. You will see that the screenplay display for the scene, only for that scene is shown here uh, in the middle, okay? And we're gonna show how to tag in a minute, okay? That's gonna be a really cool feature. Uh, on the left-hand side, of course, on the top left, on the top, left, you're going to see interior, exterior. If I click on that, notice I have four choices. These are put in, to be honest with you, most people don't use interior car and interior, exterior, like, you know, both interior, exterior. Most people really just use one of these two, but we do have the other two options there in case uh, you want to use them. The set field, which of course is brought in from the screenplay, and the day-night field again. Now, if I click the day-night field, this is going to show you all the possible day-night fields that we can use, okay? Um, notice that, of course, we have uh, evening and afternoon, midnight, twilight, sunset. Now, if I change one, let's go and, for example, change this one to afternoon. Not only does it change the, day, the DN field here to afternoon, but it changes the color because now this is a sort of a lightish green color, right? And green represents afternoon, okay? Same thing with apartment down here, let's change the whites to something else. This is day. If I were to go here and call it, um, let's call it sunrise, okay? And notice that it changes color to this sort of orangey tangerine kind of color. Now, again, these are, uh, most of these are industry standard colors. Some of them we actually uh, made industry standard because we've been around so long. Uh, so let's go in and show you what those colors are on the grid and how you can change them because you can change them if you want. It's not a, a, a die hard rule that you must have yellow for, for exterior day. It is industry standard, but I've seen many, many strip boards that, that, that have changed the colors, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and to manage and up here on the manage pull down, you could see one of the options says strip board colors. So if I click on this, this is gonna show you the grid uh, of the colors. So for example, if you wanted to change the default uh, orange from, uh, what was it, uh, sunrise, right? Sunrise was sort of this tangerine color. If you want to change that to a darker orange or orange or something like that, you can do that. And same thing with the text, okay? You can change it from a white or black text, okay? So that's how you change the colors on the board, okay? So this also uh, is something that um, if, if in the final draft script, if I were to, uh, let me go, sorry, let's go back down here. Uh, what did I change? I changed scene three, okay? So notice that now there's already a discrepancy between Gorilla, the, the schedule in Gorilla and final draft. And that's gonna happen, of course, right? So uh, only because let's just say that the UPM, right? Or the producer or production manager, decided, well, you know, this really needs to be sunrise and, and day is very, is a little too generic, right? I really want this scene to be done, to be shot and shown sunrise so we could see the sun coming through the, through the window, whatever. And so he or she therefore changed the day night field from day to sunrise. Now it's not gonna change in the script, obviously, but if you wanted to, if, if this were now uh, done like that and I, deleted the screen, the schedule in Gorilla and re-imported from scratch this final draft script, save this to sunrise, it would have, it would come in as sunrise and it would come in with the correct color. Okay. So that's very important to understand too. All right. Let's now go into, so we've done day night. We're going to do day night to death. And there's still more day night when we get to the languages, we're going to show you a little bit more day night. Okay. So now uh, let's look at a couple more things here that are very important. Uh, the scene number obviously comes in here, scene three, okay? Over here, the page count. 
this is one of the most important things that comes in from final draft. Now, not all screenplay programs bring in the, the page count. We accept writer duet. And if I'm not mistaken, writer duet does not bring in the page count. Okay. It comes in from the screenplay. It doesn't come in from Gorilla. So um, that's one, another reason why final draft is one of the uh, programs that we really, really um, recommend highly because they really are um, the industry standard when it comes to screenplay pro screenplay programs, and they've got it all down. Okay, and page count is incredibly important, especially when you're doing the board, because you want to know how many pages a you can shoot during a day. Okay, and we're going to get to that in a bit. So let's go here on the left hand side, and this is going to you're going to see breakdown categories. Okay, so if I click on the cast members category, you're going to see all the cast members. Now remember. So far, aside from changing this day to sunrise, uh, and maybe one more, I did afternoon. I did nothing to this schedule, okay? Everything that you're seeing here on this particular schedule, you saw me import it from Final Draft, okay? So if there are any errors in here, chances are the errors are in Final Draft. In, in other words, the, the formatting, okay? And now here's one I'm going to point out. Now, you might not be able to see it, but I can, and that is the character cast member number four, janitor. Now, I know because this is a sample script and I put this with errors, that the janitor is the same character as Barney, okay? Because Barney is the janitor, okay, in the screenplay. But notice that number four janitor came in and like, oh, darn, Oof, how did that happen? Okay, let's find out. And in order to find out, the easiest way to do this okay, is to go to the character and find out what scene that character is in. So I'm gonna click on the elements button here because, oh, so I'm gonna save, I'm gonna ignore the saving, don't ever do that, always save when you get that message. Click on the elements button, and this is gonna show you all the stuff that were, was imported from Final Draft, okay? Remember, I didn't type all this in here in Gorilla. This was all imported from Final Draft. So if I go here to uh, Janitor right here, cast member. Okay. Let me go into this and click on info. And now I'm going to see the uh, uh, detail for the janitor character, right? And if I click on this button right here, scenes, this is telling me that the janitor is in scene six. Okay. So let's go back to final draft and let's go to scene six. All right. And here we go. Into your basement, da da da, -da. Barney listens intently, da da, da 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 I'll be, oh, right here. This is where it is, okay? Instead of writing Barney as the character name, the writer in his or her hurriedness and excitement of the brilliance of the screenplay wrote janitor and then the dialogue and then continued on. But that's the only scene, and this is a very short scene, as you can see, that the janitor is in in scene six, okay? How do we fix that? Two ways. One, delete the entire schedule, go back in here, go back in here, change, there we go, it's gonna know, right? Barney, there we go, save this, re-import, and it'll be fine, okay? But, I mean, what if you've done stuff already? What if you've scheduled your shoot days and done your strip board and you're like, oh, I, for I didn't even notice that. There's another way to fix that. And we're gonna show you that right now. So let's go into, um, let's see here. It is under the schedule pull down. okay? Um, actually, what you wanna do is you wanna go to the, uh, the main character, which is Barney. This is the way to do it. So you go to Barney, right? And if you click on scenes, by the way, notice that you'll see all the scenes that Barney is in. Notice that he is not in scene six. He should be because, but it was tagged as janitor, right? So we need see, not only do we need to change the name of the janitor to Barney, but we need to create, make him, oh, it's a mess. We need to put him on scene six. It really is kind of just one little guy, one character. So we can fix that. Let's go in here to Barney. From the schedule pull down, let's do combine elements. This is a great feature, okay? And there's even a video on it. You see that? We're going to go here to element one, Barney, and it's saying select an element to combine or merge 
with the above elements. This will remove the selected elements. So we're gonna click on janitor and it's gonna do a confirm here. It's gonna say the master element is Barney. That's correct. He is our master character. And we are about to combine the element um, with the janitor. So let's do combine. Elements combined. Boom, check it out. Janitor uh, Barney is now in scene six. We close that and the janitor has gone, okay? So if we go back to our uh, uh, breakdown and we click on cast members, notice that the janitor is gone. Now, also number four is not there, but we can fix that too. That's a simple fix. We can go and do that. We go into elements and do a uh, update. Um, let's see, is it, um, I have to find where it is. Update cast member board IDs. And there we go, one, two, three, four, perfect. Okay, and now if we go here, there we go. All right, so that's one way to fix an error that was done in final draft or in, I'm not gonna, it's not final draft's fault, but it was the writer's fault who did not write down the correct character for a particular scene. Okay, let's go to another error that is very commonly done. I see this all the time. All right, especially with uh, the ability now to tag in Final Draft, because in Final Draft, you can tag it. I'm going to go over that too in a minute. So notice here on the left, these are the categories that came in from Final Draft, okay? So we've got, uh, I'm going to, I'm pointing out two specific ones to you, because again, I know these errors, costumes, right? And wardrobe, okay? They both have some elements in them. And it looks like, I'm gonna go back to final draft, that janitor uniform is in scene six. So boy, is this guy really messed up scene six because he tagged, he or she, who was ever tagged in final draft, tagged janitor uniform and created a category called wardrobe when the writer should have used costumes, which is already a created category in the uh, screenplay program. But instead they added a new category called wardrobe. Okay, I'm gonna go over tagging in just a second. So let me hide this. So now we've got two categories and elements in both categories, but boy, that's confusing because the prop guy, I'm sorry, the uh, wardrobe person or the whoever's doing the wardrobe is gonna be very confused. So let's fix that. So let's go back into elements, okay? And you know what, let's use the filter button here and notice over here, we've got costumes. Those are our costumes and wardrobe one wardrobe, okay? So you can see that, how that's a problem. So under the elements uh, pull down again, we have a, a new one here called combined categories. This is brand new in Gorilla 7. So we're gonna click this and it's gonna say, what's your primary category? Well, we have more in costumes, right? We have more elements in costumes. And what we wanna do is we wanna combine it with wardrobe, okay? So same kind of concept here, we're gonna combine these two categories into one category and delete the secondary category. So let's go ahead and do that. And now if I go to costumes, notice that the janitor uniform is here in the list. It's perfect. And the wardrobe category is gone, okay? Another way to fix a, an error that usually writers uh, might, might make in, in Final Draft or in, in the screenplay program. All right, let's go into the next section here and see how we're doing. Um, script notes and dual dialogue. Okay, when you import uh, a screenplay, uh, Gorilla does not support script notes, okay? Why? Because uh, they could go on forever and it was just too difficult to support that. So what we recommend you do, if you do have script, if you are using the final draft feature script notes, um, and I believe they are right here, okay? What we recommend you do is uh, go through and copy your script, delete all your script notes because they're not imported into, uh, into Gorilla. So, you know, you're making a copy, right? Delete all your script notes, which you can do here, and then save this as a copy, import the copy, okay? Because if you import with script notes, you'll probably get an error, um, or at the very least, they won't come in. So that's one issue. Another thing is dual dialogue. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. I think it's kind of silly uh, to, to see two characters. I mean, again, it's the director that might want to have them speak over each other or not, not the writer to make that decision. I'm very much, you know, 
you and your camp is the writer and you are in your camp as the director, um, uh, you will not see dual dialogue come in to Gorilla. So if you do it, now this script doesn't have any, I didn't put in, in, in any dual dialogue here, but if you were to go to a, uh, let's see, scene 11, do I have any dialogue here? There we go. If you were to go here and if, for example, the writer put in dual dialogue here, you won't see it. In fact, it will probably just be deleted. The dialogue will just be deleted entirely, which is not a problem really when you're scheduling. You don't need to see the dialogue because mo most likely you're not scheduling elements that are in dialogue. You're scheduling elements that are in action or you're scheduling elements that aren't even in the screenplay at all, okay? And now we're going to get into, which leads me to the next thing, if I'm not mistaken, and that is, oh, okay, the day night. Uh, we already did this part, but we didn't do the language part. So I kind of wanted to do tagging first, but all right, let's do this real quick, only because it's in my PowerPoint slide, and then we're going to go right into tagging. So I mentioned about different languages. So you can write your screenplay in a different language. Okay, Final Draft does support that. So you can write it in any language that you want, but the 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 set field still should be INT period and EXT period it should not be in whatever language you're writing because that's not proper uh, industry standard and it's not going to come in properly in Gorilla. You're probably just going to get a blank. It might just be like just like the day night. It might just all say interior. So if you're using a different language for your screenplay, that's fine, but make sure you use INT period or EXT period for the INT interior exterior field. For the day night field, you can certainly put in the night, the day night field in that language, okay? Especially if it's one of these languages because Gorilla supports that in the day night field. And I'm gonna show you that real quick. Um, if I go up to the day night field, remember here, we had all these options. Um, if you go up to the, let's see, where is it? Format, screenplay, no, nope. uh, right here. Under view, set language for day night. Okay, by default, it's English, okay? But if you select, for example, French or Spanish or whatever, if you say I do Spanish, for example, and I close that I have a question here about dual dialogue, I'm going to, uh, it does, no, it does not. Does deleting double dialogue on the import of the page count on the screen? No, because the page count comes in from final draft. We do not calculate the page count um, in the scene. It's already a fixed uh, amount, a fixed number with the eighths of pages. So it will not affect the patient. A patient will be correct. You just won't see the dual dialogue in the, in this, in the display. Very good question. Thanks. So uh, let's say I'm gonna do Spanish here and I close that. And um, let's see now if, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Now you can see all these are in Spanish. Okay, the the drop downs. So it will it, it will accept the the uh, the different language for the day night field. Let's go ahead and put it back to uh, English, so it's not to confuse us. There we go. Okay, so that's the day night field, and I think I want to go into tagging next. Let me see. Perfect tagging. Okay, so. What is tagging? And I'm going to get to that. I'm going to show you how to do that in Final Draft and in Gorilla. Now, tagging is really a great feature that Final Draft added. I think they added it. In, well, I know they've had it in 10 with Tagger, I think. And then in 12, was it 12 or 11? I don't remember. They, they put the tagging in the, in the screenplay, which is what Gorilla does now in version 7. So if you're familiar with how uh, final draft tags, you'll be, you'll be, it'll be very easy to, for you to tag in Gorilla because it uses the same method. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, now I'm going to explain tagging real quick. Characters with dialogue are automatically tagged. Okay. So if you have a scene with a character named Barney or the janitor, and that scene, uh, that character has dialogue, automatically that character is tagged because we know that the dialogue makes it so that there's a scene that the character is in. However, if there's a scene with a character that does not have dialogue, that character is not tagged. Now you can do it in Final Draft, but most people will do it in Gorilla, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So let's go into Final Draft real quick and show you tags mode. So now I'm in, I'm in writing mode right now. 
But if I go to production and I uh, select the tags mode option, notice that all these wonderful colors come up on the screen and we are now in tag mode, which basically means what you can do is go through the script and highlight um, a phrase. Let's see, uh, da, 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 da. music, okay, music. Let's see if you wanna do music. Highlight a phrase and then select uh, sound, for example, and hit tag, okay? And now that is highlighted and, and in the category color, which for sound, for, for, uh, for sound, it's purple. And that means that when we import this screenplay into Gorilla, that anything that is tagged is going to come in with that category as a breakdown category, okay? So, and you could see that obviously, I'm gonna hide the final draft for a moment. Let's go back to scene one. And obviously these colors come in to, to Gorilla. And so we have these items that are already tagged, okay? And this was brought in from final draft. Now we can certainly start tagging in final draft, but inevitably you're gonna do more tagging than Gorilla because the screenplay only has certain, you know, you can only see certain things in the screenplay. For example, if you're doing a, a dinner scene and, you know, uh, I mean, realistically, you're going to have to put plates and forks and knives and silverware and and whatever you're eating on on you know you have to have the whole spiel going out there the whole the whole schmear right the whole setup. So you're not going to do that all in the final draft, but you do need to basically tag all those items, and they're, they're not in the screenplay. Okay, it's not going to say there is a spoon, there there is a knife, there is a fork, there is a plate. You're not going to have that in the screenplay. So you have to do that um, in Gorilla without the screenplay. So for example, let's see. Let's see if I could do a good example here. Let's go to scene three. And I'm going to scroll down here to the scene. We have all this stuff. But I realized, OK, so here, this is a scene in an apartment in a kitchen. Perfect. But we need, let's say we need a big bowl, OK? A, a, a hot boiling uh, a, a pot, for example, on the stove. Well, it's not. We want it in the background, but it's not in the scene, okay? So let's add it. So it's not in the screenplay, but we're gonna add it. So we're gonna go to, uh, pro now, is it a prop? Now, this is another really good question, by the way, guys. Is it a prop or is it a set dressing, okay? If the if a actor is going to handle the item, for example, a pen, then it's a prop. And it goes under the uh, department head for props. But if it is just going to uh, sit there like this, whatever, and no one's going to hold it, I don't know if you can see that, and no one's going to hold it and touch it, then it is not a prop, et cetera. So let's say the pot of water is just as background, so it's not a prop, okay? It's, it's really set dressing. So let's go into set dressing, okay? Uh, it's a little hard to read because it's a lighter green, but let's go ahead and add uh, boiling pot, okay? I'm going to click OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to check mark boiling pot here. And if I close this, you can see here that boiling pot has been added to the scene. OK, it's not in the dot. It's not in the screenplay because it's not part of the screenplay per se. Right. Boiling makes it special effects. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. OK, you're absolutely right. Very well could be because someone's got to make it boiling. OK, so you're absolutely right. So. Uh, uh, that's very possible that it makes a special. You can actually change that. You can actually go into the to the element and change it to special effects. So if I click on info, that's perfect. And let's say uh, set dressing. Let's change it to uh, special effects. Do I have a special effects category? I have optical, mechanical. Really, there's no special effects. But, oh yeah, special effects. There it is. Okay. So now it's the special effects. Go ahead and close it. And notice that it changed colors. This is a great, great, great thing for at least the tutorial. And if I click on the special effects, there we go. It's now, boom, it's in special effects. So you don't have to do much except for just go there and change it for the category from set dressing to special effects. Excellent. I love that. Thanks. So that's how you can tag items that are not in the screenplay, okay? You literally just bring up the category, type in what you want to add, and, and it'll be added to that scene. Now, the nice thing about that is let's say boiling pot needs to be in, the, in scene seven or scene eight or scene nine. Um, all you have to do 
is go to scene seven or scene eight or scene nine, right? And click on special effects. It's already here, but it's not checkmarked. We're gonna go ahead and click it. And it's already added now to Boiling Pot. Now this is a lot easier than going into, because you know, a final draft is a writing program. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say gorilla, you can write your screenplay, right? A lot easier than going here and saying, okay, wait a minute. Boiling Pot was in scene three and you're like, oh, it's not, I got to do, I, you can create item, you can create uh, category uh, elements here that are not in the screenplay. And then you have to go down and, okay, you got to, you can, you can do it. It's all a very possible to do all the tagging in final draft, but there's a lot more you can do in Gorilla because now you can literally go into the boiling pot. Like you said, that it's a special effect, right? And go into the description and say, uh, you know, we need to have steam rising from the pot. It needs to be uh, black for some reason, et cetera, et cetera. So you could very, you know, uh, get a lot of detail into that one particular element. You can even put in a contact, you know, who, who's gonna do it or who's the, who's responsible for it. Is it available or is it not available? Okay, I know there's, you could put rates. This is more for, for actors and such. But in any case, um, this is how you tag elements that are not in the screenplay. Now to tag an element that is in the screenplay, and let's go back to scene three, because I do know that there's a few here. Now, here's a really good example of uh, scene three, a chubby man in a food spatter t-shirt, blah, 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 blah. Now notice it's just, there's no dialogue here in scene three. And if I go back to final draft, and if I go to scene three, and I'm looking, 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 no, again, no dialogue, but I'm in tags mode, so let me get out of tags mode. But chubby is a character that needs to be in the scene because he's sitting down eating some soup, right? So he's not tagged because he doesn't have dialogue. So we need to add him to scene three. So we're gonna hide final draft. We're gonna go into scene three, which we are. We're gonna click on cast members, click on Chubby, bam. He is now tagged in the, in the scene and, and already um, scheduled for scene three, okay? And then we're gonna schedule him on the board in for, for a shoot day. Now, if you wanna tag something that you do see in the screenplay display that was not tagged in, in, in Final Draft, you can certainly do that. So let's say uh, down here, a little hard to see, dog barking, okay? All right, let's say I wanna tag that as a sound, okay? You can highlight it, you hit the space bar, and this is gonna be a sound, let's say, it could be a special effects, I don't know, right? Very well could be special effects, but let's just put it for sound because it's simple, click on tag, Okay, and now notice that dog barking is highlighted it's in purple because purple is that sound color and notice that dog barking is here in the scene. Okay, so we've now tagged uh, dog barking in the scene. So notice there's multiple ways to tag things for a scene. You could do it by highlighting and then selecting a category or you can do it by on this side, you know, clicking on costumes or what have you. Uh, I'm sorry, I was doing uh, special effects and, and adding something here and adding it that way, okay? So that's tagging in both Final Draft and in Gorilla, okay? Perfect, let me go back to my PowerPoint. Let's see, tagging Gorilla, I think I already did this, right? Tagging characters that don't have dialogue, go to scene three, tag Chubby, we did that. Tag elements that the screen editor did not tag, did that. Tag elements that are not seen in the screenplay display. I did it, great. We did all these things, right? I think so. All right, any questions about, about tagging? But I think we did, we, we covered tagging pretty well. Now this is, this takes a long time to do. You could take day, days sometimes to do this because you really have to, sometimes a lot of people don't do this until they actually know where the location is and, and uh, you know, get some of the, you know, um, uh, the set out and how oh, we need this or we need that or we need this. That. So it's a, it's a difficult thing to do, but needs to be done. Okay, changes made to the scripts. Okay, ah, all right. Uh, Norman. All right, perfect. So now I'm gonna go to another, oh, can you copy and paste elements on mass from one scene into another or do you have to click on one by one? Good question. I think you can. Um, let's see. So if I go to scene three, right? Um, I think I saw something, hold it, hold on. Breakdown, 
copy all elements from another breakdown sheet. Okay, so that 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 could be do it. Let's see. Um, yeah, select a breakdown sheet to copy elements from. Yeah, I think this is your, your question. So you can you could select a scene and copy all the elements from one scene to another scene, so you don't have to do it one by one. I believe this was a new feature that we added in Gorilla Seven. I don't think this was in Gorilla Six. But this is a great feature because let's say you have 20 or 30 elements for a scene and you realize that the next scene right after that, you need all the same elements. Well, you could do that here. Yeah. So uh, I believe that is a brand new feature that we added right here under, under breakdown. Okay. Uh, another, another thing that, um, but you can't select multiple elements to copy. Right. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know about that. Let's see. I think it does all. Yeah, I see they're all here. So if you wanted to do like just four of them, like bam, 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 bam. Uh, you know, I don't believe you can. I think it's got to be all of them there. Then you can delete them. So if you do like, let's say if you, you want only four or five, and then you can go back and just delete them for that scene. But yeah, uh, can you link? Yes, you can. Uh, you can do linking. I wasn't going to do that in this uh, in this webinar, but I'll show you really quick that you can do that. I'll just show you where to go. But absolutely, there is a uh, linking is definitely a feature. So if you go to elements and uh, let's say I go to um, you said dog trainer, perfect. Let's say uh, Barney is the um, is a janitor, so he always needs a broom. Okay, so if you click on uh, info and uh, linked. And there's even a video here. So let's actually, first you do have to create the broom. So let's go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead and click the, you gotta cl click, create the element first. So let's call it a prop and call it a broom. Okay. And edit element, no, we don't have to do that. Well, let's do props broom, right? Okay. And uh, there it is. And then if I go back to Barney info, linked, oh, it keeps on coming up with that in video. And Barney, you, oh, that's, uh, this is a really nice feature. You can do, you could do linked groups. So let's say you don't, you wanna have five different groups that Barney is attached to. Um, I'll call it Barney as the janitor, right? Addressed as janitor, okay? And uh, let's add the broom and go here to props and broom, okay? You could do more than one. You see, you could do broom. I could do plunger. There's plunger right there, right? And so now um, you could click this, do one of two things. You could either click this relink button. Now this is, this is a little dangerous, but relink uh, will add broom to every scene that Barney is in, okay? So if you don't want him to have a broom in every scene, you don't want to do this, but what you can do is if you go to a scene, let's see if I could, Barney happens to be the main guy, so he's probably in most of the scenes. Ah, okay, here's a perfect example. He's not in this scene. So if I click on cast members now, notice that when I see Barney, notice the little chain link here, which means that if I click on Barney, then I'm going to see that Barney, there we go, Barney and Broom comes in. So yes. You can link elements together. And then when you, you could either globally attach that uh, newly linked element to all the uh, elements for that master element, or from then on go in and, and uh, when you attach that master element, the linked element will be attached. So good question. All right, very good question. Let's see where we are here. Uh, changes, got it, got it, got it. Changes. Okay, we're running a little bit late, so um, I'm gonna might have to make this a little bit short. But uh, let's see. Going to manager here, and let's go into the storm and sink sample. So let's say you've made changes in the script, and you've already done the breakdown. You've already done so many things in the breakdown, and you've made changes in the script. There are three ways that you could fix that. Okay. And let's see what those, I think there are three ways. Let's see. Uh, yes. One, manually make the change gorilla. Now, you, it doesn't sound, it, it sounds a lot more difficult than it is, but 
if literally the writer says scene five has changed, it's just scene five. You've got 200 scenes in the darn screenplay. It's just scene five. So what's changed? Well, the, the, the page length is now uh, three eighths of a page instead of two eighths of a page. Well, that's not much of a change. Well, I can go into to, to the scene and change the page count from two eighths to three eighths, okay? Or to four eighths, if that's the case. So you could make changes, very minor changes. You could do that in Gorilla. If it's a tag change, there's no reason at all to import it again because you could do the tags here. You're supposed to do the tags here. So that's not a reason to do it. So page length, if it's a minor page length change, you could do it here. Um, if it is a screenplay dialogue change, and to be honest with you, you don't have to do it because the dialogue doesn't affect the schedule, right? But if you're really sort of anal about it, because now I want to see that new dialogue there. We do have update screenplay display, brand new feature in Gorilla 7. So what this will do is you literally will uh, select the screenplay again, as long as the script is locked. Remember the scenes have to be locked, okay? And all it will do, it will not change the breakdown it'll, or the page count. Uh, I don't think it changes the page count. All it changes, no, it doesn't. All it changes is the screenplay display. So uh, that, that's, so you have to be mindful of that. So if the screenplay display is longer, you might have to do both. But this will change only the screenplay display for that scene. The other two options are the sync option and the add screenplay option. Now I'm running a little bit late, but I just wanted to tell you about this. So I'm not gonna go over it. I was gonna actually sync a screenplay, but what you can do is click on the sync screenplay and allow this allows you, as it says here, to sync a screenplay uh, from the FDX file format into Gorilla. Um, it must, you must have the scene numbers being the same, okay? So if you added scene 2A or scene 2B or something like that, it's a different, it's a brand new scene there, right? It will come in because it's a new scene. Gorilla will not recognize that scene number and it will say, okay, new scene, I'm going to bring it in. But if the writer renumbered the scenes and now scene two is scene three and scene three is scene four and scene four is scene five, et cetera, your whole thing is going to be messed up. That is why this is usually checkmarked by default. I, I deselected it. Auto save schedule before sync. Very important because if you have a mistake that comes in, again, like I said, it's very possible to mess this up. Your whole schedule will be messed up. You want to make sure that you have your schedule saved so you can revert back to another uh, uh, file in case that's messed up. But we can do a sync screenplay, which will bring in new scenes, uh, new characters if they are there, new dialogue, new elements if they're tagged. Okay, all that will come in. So that's a really nice feature. We have another one here called Add Screenplay. Now, this is different. What Add Screenplay does is it literally adds, okay? So if you, uh, let's say this ends at scene 16, and then you start the next screenplay at scene 17, like it could be an episode, right? And that's as long as the scene number is not the same, okay? It will only add with a different scene number. So you don't want to have scene one as an add because it's going to mess it up, okay? So add means add. Add means new scenes, okay? That's what that means. So perfect for episodes, okay? So when you do an add, it will ask you, do you want to add this into a new episode? Because this is a new feature in Gorilla that you can literally create episodes, okay? And I'm going to go over that in just, just briefly because it is such a nice feature that we added in 7. And this allows you, this is a, a screenplay or a schedule, uh, sorry, that has episodes. So you could see here, if I click on it, I've got five episodes here. And you can create as many as you want, of course, per schedule. And the advantage to that is that when you do a episode within the, uh, multiple episodes with the same schedule, you can then go to the board and schedule different scenes from different episodes on the same day. Okay. So that means, let's say you want to shoot a scene one from the mountain man and scene uh, one or scene two or whatever from the city girl on the same day, you could do that, okay? As long as you set it up properly. We have episode, uh, videos on how to do that. And that's a really great feature, okay? Let's go on to, okay, so that's what changes made to the script. Let's go on to the summary field. Okay, this was also added in seven. Again, not a big, a big thing, but it certainly was requested, if I'm not mistaken. In final draft, if you go to scenes, 
And a lot of people use this uh, feature. You can type a summary of the scene here. So this is a summary of the scene. Okay. You could do this for as many scenes as you want. Um, if that is here in Final Draft um, and you import your screenplay from Final Draft into Gorilla, that will appear right here. Okay. So all your summary will come in so you could still access it. The nice thing about it is it is modifiable. So this is more summary. So you can add to it, you can subtract, you delete it, you can do whatever you want. So that's a nice new feature that we added from Final Draft uh, to link to Final Draft. Okay. Screenplay display options. Um, okay. So let's go back to the one that we were using, which is this one. Okay. And let me go back to the breakdown sheet tab. So you can see that the screenplay displays here. So I'm going to show you the scene that you're on. Okay. Um, when you are uh, done scheduling your script, breaking down your script, you might not want to see it because it does, it, it, granted, you know, there, there are colors here and it has to draw it every time you click a new scene. It does take about a half a second to draw. So if you, if you want, you can literally cl uh, close that and then not see it. So you can, you'll be able, still be able to see all your elements. You see, you see them in a list as opposed to a highlighted. Cause you know, in a way this is sort of duplicating, you know, what you're seeing, which is nice when you're tagging, right? But when you're done and you're kind of just working on the schedule, you're like, well, I don't need to see the screenplay right now. And it's duplicating what's above it. So you're done tagging, you could close it all out and then just, you know, you go to the next scene, go to the next scene, go to the scene. You'll still see all your scheduled elements. You just won't see the display. So you could hide it. Okay. Another thing is uh, you can do is uh, modify it. I think you can make it bigger, right? So if you want to do the opposite, you can do the opposite, all right? If you want to do that. All right. Let's see. Let's see how we're doing. Uh, shoot days. Okay. So I've got about another 15 minutes, it looks like. I really am running a little behind, but, um, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Uh, but I do want to get over some of these things that are really, really important. So hopefully you'll stick around because by the way, we're going to have, did I say we're going to have a raffle? We're going to have a raffle at the end uh, after the Q&A. Uh, three copies of Final Draft, guys. Three. I've got three copies to give away. Um, so so stick around and and uh, if you want if you want file draft, of course, and if you want to learn more about uh, about scheduling. Okay. So let's go on to shoot day. So once you've done the schedule, and this is really the, you know, you can still go back and forth. It's okay that you're doing the breakdown, and then doing the shoot days and the strip board and going down and doing the breakdown. But for the most part, you got to get at least part of the breakdown done, especially the actors. Okay because that's important when you do the board. So let's go ahead and do the board. I'm sorry, yeah. So the first thing before you do the board is the shoot days. So when, if I click on the shoot days button, it's gonna ask you to create some shoot days, okay? Now, granted, a lot of times when you're doing a schedule, you don't know when the actual start day is gonna be, but you do might have an idea of how long it's gonna be, whether it's a six week shoot, 10 week, two week, or, or what have you, but you do have to put in something, okay? So. I'm going to, this is a short one. So I'm just going to say uh, 414. It always says today's date, which is fine. And so I'm just going to do uh, five days here. And I'm going to click on create single. And it's going to create five shoot days for me that we can now start scheduling uh, see, um, scenes on those days. Okay. So you can see the start date and end date here. Uh, principal photography is the name of the uh, production phase because every the nice thing about Gorilla is you can create multiple phases. I'm not going to go over this right now, but you can create multiple phases in for a schedule. So you can have principal photography, you can have pickups, you could have a uh, second unit, right? You can have multiple, multiple phases for your production. So let's go ahead into scene uh, one. I'm sorry, day one. And this is now the detail for day one, okay? So if I go into the uh, crew call times, this is my crew. Now I don't have any crew, but we can certainly create crew, right? So we could do one of two things. We could do them one by one. So let's say I wanna create uh, Sam Jones and give him the title of uh, director, right? And done, 
and then schedule Sam Jones. So now what I've done is I've literally scheduled the director Sam Jones to be needed for day one, okay? You could also import your crew from a text file, okay? Which is really nice. So let's do that real quick. If I close this out, if I go into the crew tab, there's Sam Jones, right? Let's go ahead and import my crew from a text file. Let's see if I can do that. This is gonna show you what the text file should look like. So you wanna make sure that you map it this way, right? And let's go ahead and click on import crew. Now you could do with titles or with thi without titles. I'm gonna choose one with, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and import uh, a list. And this is gonna show you, this is like a map. You see this legend? So we've got the name on the left and the email address. You could just check it if you want before you click import because you could click cancel if this is not correct, right? Perfect. So you can go ahead and click on import. And this is gonna import a uh, uh, this Excel file um, into our crew. And we're gonna have uh, this, this database of crew that we can then attach to our, um, our shoot days, right? Okay, excellent. So now if I go back, I'm gonna go right back to that same screen that I was at, which is the detail for shoot day one, okay? And now if I click, I'll probably have two directors, but if I click, I do, yeah, because the director was in the Excel spreadsheet, right? So let's say that I want the DP and I want the camera operator and the still photographer and the gaffer and da, 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 da. So now I'm literally scheduling my crew for day one, okay? And then you can do the same thing for day two and day three and day four. So if I want to go to different days, you can just select the different day there and start uh, adding crew for that day, okay? So if I go now to cast, notice there's nobody here. And you can't, there's no plus, oh, look at the difference. If I go to crew, notice there's a plus sign here in the bottom. We get this a lot, by the way. And then people say, hey, there's no plus sign for cast. Why is there no plus sign for cast? I cannot add my cast to a shoot day. And we tell them that's because you can't add cast to a shoot day. What you do is you add cast to a breakdown or to a scene, okay? Uh, because that comes in from the screenplay, right? So remember, we go back here to scene one and uh, do I have Barney? I mean, we must add Barney to scene one, okay? Just so we could have Barney in scene one. Okay, and Amanda to scene one, just so we can see that. Okay, so notice now that scene one, I've got two uh, characters attached. I don't, I don't have actors, that's separate. Okay, actors are separate, but I have two characters attached. So if I go now to create a board, I'm gonna be able to, ma to marry my scenes and my shoot days and automatically my actors, cast members, I'm sorry, are gonna appear on the board. So let's go ahead, uh, I'm gonna appear on the shoot days. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create a board and I'll call it board one, okay? And attach it to the phase. And I'm gonna create the board. Um, how you schedule cast, rehearsal, fitting, COVID tests, et cetera. Um, that's, that's separate, okay? That's pre-production. So that's not part of the schedule per se. You can, you can in a, in this section called meetings. I don't go over that in this, in this uh, webinar, but uh, there is a section to do that where you can schedule events like rehearsals, fittings, COVID test, all that kind of thing um, on the calendar and then print out a calendar. That's not part of this schedule because this is just the scene schedule, okay? But yes, you can do that. Um, and I, I just don't go over that in here. If I have some time at the end and I'm already running late, I'll try to do that a little bit, but we can do that, but it's not in this section, okay? It's in a different section of, of Gorilla. So now that I've got the, uh, uh, created a board, notice what it did. It created a board with all my scenes and they are in numerical order here. And on the very bottom, I have these black strips, which are day breaks, okay? These day breaks are my shoot days, very simple. So if I wanted to schedule, and I'm gonna do a very simple one. If I wanted to schedule scene one and scene two for day one, all I do is drag the black strip up to day one. 
And if I want to schedule day two, I drag scene uh, that to day two, and then et cetera, et cetera. Now, obviously, this is does not going to make any sense because you don't have day night scenes all together. I'm just doing this just for a show, just for, for simplicity's sake. But now I've created a board. I'm going to go ahead and save this board. And you can create multiple boards. So let's say this is one scenario called board one. I can create a new board if I want and call it scenario two, okay, board two, and have a different board. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that and have multiple boards and then decide which is your default board, okay? So I'm just going to do one board. And so notice here on the right-hand side, in this column here, you're going to see numbers. These are the IDs for the cast, okay? One and two, three, one, three and four. This is telling me what cast is needed for that scene. Now that I have a daybreak, I now know, Gorilla knows, that one and two, whoever one and two are, and I can go over here to see Barney is one and Amanda is two, is scheduled for day one. Day two, I've got three, one, and three and four. I've got Chubby, uh, Mama, and Barney. Amanda doesn't seem to be needed for day two, okay? So now if I close the board, and now if I go back to shoot days, and I go back to day one, it's calculating call times based on the board, okay? So now notice I've got Barney and Amanda automatically appear on, on day one, okay? I did not physically put them here on day one. The gorilla knows to put them there because they are scheduled for scene one and scene two, and scene one and scene two are scheduled for day one. You see how that works? It sort of filters through the, the scene, um, uh, has the actors, and then the scene is on the day, and therefore we know what uh, actors are needed for what day, okay? So that's basically how you schedule your actors and your crew for the day, okay? Let me see. I'm going to go through shoot days I did, crew I did, the strip board I did. All right, we're doing good. Call sheet and other reports. Okay, we're almost, we're getting to the end here. We're doing well. Remember this, guys, this is sort of a an intro, I wanted to go over formatting the screenplay, getting the screenplay into Gorilla the right way and sort of an introduction to Gorilla scheduling. We do have two other classes that if you really wanna know more about Gorilla and I will go over in depth, a lot of the features of both scheduling and budgeting, sign up for our intro class. Uh, we do that about once a month and uh, we're going to be having in uh, May, we're going to be having our very first, for a very long time, our advanced class, which is, that'll go over for sure, the, the scheduling, the cast rehearsals, the fittings, the COVID, things like that, okay? That will be in the advanced, because that's definitely an advanced feature. So if you really want to know more, uh, definitely sign up for those two. Uh, within uh, some, this is Thursday, next week, there'll be, uh, we'll have a, a blast going out maybe, or go to our website and, 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 uh, in a few days and you'll you'll be able to sign up for those. So let's go over that. Now that I've done just sort of a basic schedule, okay? Now what we can do is we can create some reports, okay? Is th this is the most important thing is once you've got your board done and you have your shoot days and your scenes sort of married, you can actually run production reports, okay? So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna click this and click on a call sheet. And this is going to print just sort of a very simple call sheet as you can see, but it'll have scene one and two, as you know, we have scene one and two on, on day one. Our cast, Barney and Amanda, these are all the elements we need. Remember broom, we added broom, right? Because it's a linked element. This is the crew. We need all of these crew members and their call times. We can modify the call times if we want. Their phone numbers, contact information that was imported from Excel, right? And then I didn't do any meals and things like that, but there are lots of different features here. And I go over this in the intro class where you can do meals, you could do parking, atmosphere stand-ins, uh, meetings. This is where you would do the fittings, okay, right here. Uh, vehicles, equipment, and things like that. So now that we've gone, got our basic schedule in, even though there's a lot more we need to do, I'm gonna show you real quickly all the different reports that Gorilla has. And there's so many reports I can't, I need, literally need a whole class to just do them. But this is sort of a very quick way you can go through and do a report. So I told, I showed you call sheet. We have a, a breakdown report. So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and uh, do breakdown report. 
And this is going to show you the scenes and all the elements in that scene. Okay. Uh, this is sort of a nice report. You could scroll through very simply. You want to do a PDF. You can just print a PDF of that right now or print it to, to, uh, to a printer if you want to do that. Um, down again, just go to the print button. And the art department report is a really nice one or one line. Um, if you are strip board, again, if you wanted to show what the, uh, oh, I got to say the board. Okay. Uh, that's why you can't do that. But if you want to see more reports, click on the more reports button. And what this is going to do is it takes you to the reporting screen and you can literally go through and let's say, for example, uh, I did break, did I do break? Uh, there's one called a, um, what is it called here? Oh, okay. This is a strip board. Let's see. We could, we could do a sample of what that looks like. So if I click this, this will show you a very quick sample of what that report will look like. So if I click up here to the pull down, notice you could select pretty much all the reports. So what is a day out of days report? Very, very important report that shows you what actors are needed or uh, for what day, okay? Uh, a very in, uh, uh, standard industry report that a lot of people need to print. Okay, if you want to find out what does a day schedule look like, you could do that. Oh, that's a cool report. If you want to find out what a crew call sheet looks like, you could do that. This will give you the crew call, crew call sheet, which is basically the crew, the day and what crew is needed for that day, okay, with their contact information, right? If you wanted to customize a report a little bit, you can do that anytime you see a gear button here on the right. So let's say, for example, I did the uh, crew call sheet, right? Um, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, I wanted to do the uh, strip board because uh, that's customizable, there we go. Strip board right here. This will show you if you want to print thin strips, boneyard strips, the banners, do you want to print it in black and white? The call sheet's another one that is really good that you could customize. Um, I'm sorry, that's cast call times, not the call sheet. There we go, call sheet. All these features, how to sort the different elements on the call sheet. Uh, do you want to print um, locations or not on the call sheet? You could do that because a call sheet, you know, you only really want it to be one page or maybe a page and a half or something like that. And you can do that here. Another thing that we added in Gorilla 7 is the ability to export a lot of information. So this is a new button here, this little Excel button. And if you click it, any of these, uh, these are basically reports in Gorilla that I just showed you but you can export this information to a tab separated text file, for example, or an Excel file, and then modify the information as needed. So you can really, really, really customize it, right? If you really don't like the way Gorilla, uh, that report is, is uh, presented to you, you can export that uh, report into a, a different file format and then do what you want in Excel. A perfect example is the call sheet. So if you wanted to customize your own call sheet, because a, a lot of production companies have their own look, they do it in Excel, but there's no reason to redo it all from scratch. You can literally export the information here from the call sheet uh, from Gorilla. All the data will come into a report and then you could customize it, okay? So that is reports, a lot of stuff. Now, understand that I didn't, uh, this is screenplays and scheduling. I did not go over budgeting at all because that's not part of this webinar. We do have that in the intro class uh, that goes over budgeting. I just wanted to be scheduling only. And you could see that I'm an hour and a half into this and I haven't even uh, finished everything that I wanted to do. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. Uh, great. Oh, we're at the Q&A. All right. So um, fantastic. So we, we're, we're just about the end here. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. It doesn't just have to be about final draft and guerrilla scheduling. It could be about budgeting. It could be about other parts of the program. I am running a bit over, so I don't want to um, uh, uh, go too in depth about other things, but I'd be happy since you have me to do some questions if you want. Um, if not, I'll, um, I'll wrap it up and I'll show you guys how to, uh, to, to uh, be part of the raffle if you guys are interested in getting the final draft, okay? In fact, I'll, let me get that ready for you guys. Um, so again, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. Um, all right, so if you guys are, like I said, Final Draft has been kind enough to give us three copies that we're going to raffle off. And, oh, good, excellent. Oops. 
and uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, what you want, if you want to be part of that, if you have final draft already, you know, maybe in the spirit of being nice, let someone else uh, have it uh, that d doesn't have it, you know, um, but uh, if you don't have it, if you do have it, I can't stop you from getting, trying to be in the raffle, of course. Uh, please send an email to uh, raffle at junglesoftware.com to be eligible. And please include a sentence or two about the, sem about the webinar, if you enjoyed it, what you liked about it, what you'd like to see or learn about in the future. Um, we do these uh, once a month, I, I, do a, I do a webinar, different topics, usually scheduling and budgeting. This is, like I said, a brand new one. This will be recorded so you could view it again. Um, and I will be once every two months or so, maybe three months, I do an advanced one, but people really like the, uh, the, um, the intro. Uh, will final draft auto tag import all? Um, I'm not sure. Will final draft auto tag? Can you maybe rephrase that question so I can get a little bit better of an idea of what you mean? Because I'm not quite sure what you mean by auto tag. So maybe rephrase that for me. Um, when we import Screamer from Celtics, we don't have to. That's right. You don't. Do you have any advice on how to get page count? Okay. I'll get back to you, uh, Kevin, in a second. So you're correct that Celtics does not import the page count. So there is a, you know, I had it somewhere. I don't have it uh, uh, in front of me. Um, but um, there is a piece of paper that does the eighths, you know, with a ruler. And what you, you, I mean, I know it's kind of a pain in the ass, but basically, look, you don't have to be exact, 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 as long as you, you do a page and halves, in my opinion. Okay. So even if it's like one and a quarter, just say one and a half. So you don't have to sit there and rack your brains out. Okay. But, um, you know, uh, you, you're right about that. One page equals uh, um, uh, eight, it's, it's divided into eight sections. You're absolutely right. So a half a page is four eighths of a page, right? Uh, which is really a half a page. So um, that's correct, uh, what you said there. But I would not go in and to the T put in, you know, two and two eighths of a, you know, measure each scene that's just would drive you nuts, but be as close as you can. Again, it's, it's a guide because look at it this way. If you, if you, if the writer put in, and I've seen this in screenplays. Okay. If it's an action script and, and, and the writer literally says, and I've seen this in lethal weapon. I don't know if you've read the screenplay from lethal weapon. I read it a long time ago when I was a script reader, but the writer literally wrote, the again, I'm paraphrasing. The most kick-ass car chase happens right now. Okay, that was one line in 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 the screenplay, and there's no way that this is one eighth or less of a page of script. Okay, this is going to be a five, six, seven minute scene. Okay, so understand that it's a guide. Okay, but uh, anyway, that that's my answer to that question. Um, when it's the episode, any tags gorilla will not import. Okay. Um, from final draft, as long as it's tagged, it will import. Um, is, even if it's tagged and not in the scene, okay? Because there's a way to do that in final draft. You can go into final draft just like in gorilla, go to the scene and tag uh, items that are not in, in, in the screenplay, right? But as long as it's tagged, it will, it will come in or it should come in. And if it doesn't, of course, we'll take a look at it to see why it doesn't, okay? from what's in final draft. Um, okay, good question, good question. Um, see, that's when you, the question about Celtics, you're right. And that's really why we kind of recommend final draft because it'll bring you that page count with you and you can tag, you can't really tag in Celtics, okay? Again, you don't have to tag because you could do it in Gorilla, but um, it certainly is a nice, a nice add-on to have. Um, notes, delete and import in copy of final draft. The notes, now let me see now. Um, okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, oh, script notes. Oh, you're talking about script notes, right. Script notes will not import, right? Uh, yeah, notes delete and import and copy, for, correct. So the best way to do it, to get a nice clean import because uh, we do not import the, the script notes, make a copy, delete your script notes and import. That's what we recommend because a lot of times we'll get script uh, 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 errors 
that say my screenplay stopped at scene 15, why? Because scene 16 had a whole bunch of script notes and the way that the XML handles it just kind of like it, the brain freezes, you know, and, and it just blows up. So that's usually what our recommendation is, is delete the script notes for uh, before you import. Uh, final draft category has to match category or does it create a new category and final draft category? Good question. Um, it doesn't have to, and that's why the combined category feature has been added in Gorilla 7. Um, I think that what Final Draft did is, and I think, let's see, a good example is the background and the extras. If I'm not mistaken, Final Draft's um, change, let me go to tags mode. It's uh, a good question here. Let's see. And let's see. Um, do I have it here? Extra. No, it is extras. Okay, I thought it was background. Um, I thought at one point they changed it to background. Um, but these categories that you see here that I'm scrolling down are all in Gorilla. The wardrobe one is one I added here. I literally did that for the error sake because um, costume is the one that you really should use. I added it here to do the error, you know, because wardrobe and costume are the same category. But if you create a new category here, it will import into Gorilla and attach elements to it, okay? It will import. Um, all right, excellent. That's a good question also. Any, any other questions? If you do have any questions uh, that you come up with later on, please feel free to email us or chat us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer that or... or, or um, uh, let's see, can you, let's see, can you part scenes by duplicating a scene to create a part one, two? Good, all right, I like, I like that one. That's an advanced feature, but yes, you can do that. So for example, if I go into, you absolutely can do that. It's called um, duplicating a breakdown. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Is it uh, right here, uh, duplicate, right? Can you scenes, uh, part scene by duplicating a scene to create part one and two, two, right. So let's say scene one or scene two or scene three. It's a long scene. You want to shoot it over two days, okay? For example, so you might want to do, so this is actually a good um, example of renaming the scenes in Gorilla, which won't be renamed in, the, in, in Final Draft. So if I were to go into scene one and it's two signs of a phone conversation, yeah, you could do that too. So let's say I duplicate the breakdown sheet here. So now I've got one copy and by default, it just does one copy, okay? So what I can do is it's up to you. You could go in here and call it 1B, right? And if you wanna go to, to one and change it to 1A, I mean, you certainly can. Uh, if you wanna leave it to one, you, could, you certainly can. But now what that allows you to do is if you go to the board, you will now have a, a scene one and scene 1B as two separate strips. So you can either do that on the same day or on a different day, okay? So I don't, do I have a board for this? I don't know if I have a board for this. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I do, okay. So uh, notice that I go down to the very bottom, if you could see, notice that scene 1B is now here, okay? So I can drag that up and I could either put it right after scene one if I want, or literally put it on scene on day two Right, one point. Yeah, you could do that too. You could do that. That numbering uh, uh, will be fine. And one uh, B is now shot on day two. Okay, so even if you want to do something like this, you know, you could say, okay, we're doing scene one at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, and then the beginning of the next day, because you could see one B is now the first scene to be shot on day two. Okay, so we're going to continue, leave the set all as is, and everything like that. So you could certainly do that. Um, so you could split scenes that way. So we call it split scenes, I think, or duplicating scenes. And you could do it again and again and again. You could have three scene ones if you want. It's, it's going to take three days to shoot it, okay? Um, another quick thing I'll show you is the sheet number, right? Since I'm, I'm on here, notice that sheet number is empty. Uh, by default, Final Draft does not import a sheet number because a sheet number is, is a scheduling thing. It's not a, a script thing. So you, if you don't want to use it, you could just hide it. You, you don't have to use it. You could go into the, the, the strip board design over here and literally uh, turn off uh, sheet right there, right? 
so you don't want to see it on the board. But if you do want to use sheet, uh, what you can do is uh, go into the list view here on the breakdown sheet. And this shows you a list of all your scenes sort of in a break uh, in an Excel type view, which is really helpful. So you could see it very quickly. And what you can do is you can say renumber sheets, right? And all of a sudden, and you could literally populate all your sheets numerically, and then that'll appear on the board, okay? And you can modify them if you want, okay? And this is another way on the uh, on this list that you can uh, click on a scene to go to it. So if I want to quickly go to scene eight or scene nine, you just click on the arrow and you go to that. Can you redesign layout of strips, e.g. put scene on far left? Yes, that's basically, I showed you a little bit of that with, uh, with uh, that strip work print design, but yes, you can do that. So for example, if you go here to the strip work print design, um, you can uh, redesign this the way you want. Note, there are four basic strip designs here that are sort of templates. So if I click on strip design two, notice that is a little bit different. Strip design three, it's a little bit, this shows you the location here, right? Here's the, the interior cities over here. But if you want to, you wanted to um, put the scene number on the far left, you could certainly do that. What you would do is find the scene number, which is right here. And notice here it's an eight in this column, it's an A6, which is right there, four and four B is a sample. What I can do is then click over here to A12 and make sure that there's nothing else on A12 so that it'll show up on the right hand side. So yes, you can modify this. It's a little, little, you know, uh, uh, um, hard to look at all the little check boxes and where everything is. Even the little, um, do you see the, uh, uh, lines here between A7 and A8. I don't know if you could see that line there. If you don't want the line, you could click that and the line will go away, right? So you don't have to have a line there. So you can't customize the board and you could actually save a customization. You could save one customization, a design, right? So you can do that, okay? Uh, let me say no right there. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Some good questions, people. All right. I think, uh, wow, I'm so late. I, I did not think it was going to go this late. But again, it's my first time I'm doing this, uh, this seminar. I've never done this one before, but I wanted to uh, get a lot of good information uh, out to you guys about how to schedule and how to, how to format the screenplay and all. So I'm going to wrap it up because uh, we're up to an hour and 40 minutes long. But it's great. Good, good seminar. So again, if you want the final draft, please uh, send us, let me show that up again. Uh, send me an email to raffle at junglesoftware.com. Please include a line or two if you enjoy the seminar, uh, webinar, I keep on saying seminar, uh, a sentence or two, what you'd like to see, uh, perhaps uh, what you'd like to learn about, be happy to put it together. Uh, we, do, we do most of our updates and most of our features based on, on user requests. You know, we've been doing this now for come on 20 years. We've been doing Galoa scheduling and budgeting. And it's, uh, uh, you know, the reason why it's such a great program is because of the people that use it and, and get back to us and uh, with, with, with ideas on how to make it better. The Gorilla Guide is, is our PDF file, it's, uh, both for scheduling and budgeting goes through you know, the, the entire manual, goes through all the, the software. Training videos is really, really helpful. We've got scheduling and budgeting. So if I click on scheduling, you're gonna see all these features, all these, uh, I'm sorry, videos that we have, how to import a final a screenplay for Final Draft 12, which is uh, uh, what I went through a lot of that here. Uh, importing a movie magic screenplay for using movie magic screen, screenwriting. Strip board, look at all these on the board. Things like that, the customizing the board, which you asked about about adding the scene to the right-hand side instead of there, adding banners right there, uh, lunch and company move, and you could do that. Crew and cast call times right there, um, things like that. Emailing reports, printing reports, headers and logos, blackout dates, crew. So there's a lot of stuff here that we have that you can access um, right from the program, okay? All right, everyone, I am going to, you're very welcome. 
and again, I'm, we're always open to questions. We love questions. Uh, email, chat, best best time to for questions you could call to. We do, we do, we do pick up the phone. Believe it or not, not uh, not all the time, but we do. We are here. We'll answer you. We'll we'll, we'll call you back. Uh, any other good screenwriting programs? Um, my first recommendation is Final Draft. My second is Movie Magic Screenwriter. Uh, not high, not as used as much but it is a very intensive program. It has a lot of the great features that Final Draft has um, and some other features that are more production oriented. So those are the two that I recommend. I know the people and I know the companies very, very well. And we have a good relationship with them going on 20 years with both of these companies. So um, for, for, for us, those are the ones, those are the only two that we recommend. I'm not saying not to use Celtics or not to use Writer Duet or Fade In. Those are fine programs. They'll do the job for screenwriting. But if you are really keen on scheduling, we recommend one of those other two programs. Final Draft first, Movie Master Screen Editor second. Okay. All right, guys. I think that's it. I'm, I'd be happy to stay, but I think we're good, right? We're good? It's weird doing these webinars because I, I, I see the chat and I know you guys are there, but I don't hear anybody. It's the strangest thing in the world doing these webinars, but they're good. They're good. All good. Okay. Excellent. Like I said, we're always here. Please reach out with any questions. Um, uh, happy to answer questions. Download the trial. Okay. If you're not sure that it's for you because um, it's a lot, we have a 15 day trial for Gorilla. You can download it. Uh, let me see if I can, uh, without messing things up, is it possible for me to go to our website? There we go. Okay. So you can go to our website here, junglesoftware.com. And um, if you go to support downloads, okay. And right here, you can download scheduling. Now, these are the same, by the way, they just look different because why not? Because we have one, because you can you can purchase scheduling separately than budgeting, okay? But um, if you can get the combo pack, which includes both, but the download is the same. It's the same program, okay? It just unlocks uh, one or the other or both. Click on Macintosh or Windows, and you can download it. We have other programs also, like Koala Call Sheets and the Rate Book and our Storyo program. You can check those out too. Uh, if you want to learn more about Gorilla. Go to our learn right here. Our training videos are here. Our articles and tips are there. Our webinars are there. If you want to know in depth about what is the combo pack and what is guerrilla scheduling exactly, we go over uh, in depth the program and what you can do with it, import your screenplay, et cetera, et cetera. So have fun with it, okay? All right, I think we are good. And I'm going to get ready to sign off in just a second. And thank you again for coming. This was a great, great uh, uh, seminar, webinar. I'm never going to get it right. All right. All right, guys. Have a good evening or morning or afternoon or wherever you are. And I am going to sign off. <laughs>